I, I do think this year that makes a lot of sense. If you look at measured moves in various technical charts, um, we have to get through this high here, which is that 2075 double top. But once that gets cleared, I think you have a lot of money that starts chasing gold up because of that breakout. That's a big, big level that a lot of investors are watching. It is always precious metals. Now we've seen gold touch off an all-time high recently and have a pullback from there. Have you got a chart there that you want to pull up? Give us an idea of what you're thinking in relation to gold. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're right on that. And I've been talking about a gold breakout for some time. Uh, we finally got that. Uh, now we're seeing what would be considered a classic retrace. So here's your gold chart. And again, what we did basically on the fear and panic of, of the Russia invasion, gold had spiked up all the way into a technical resistance level known as double top, right? So the high from 2020 basically touched in just over the last week or two. Um, what you've now seen is a pullback in gold. And this is very common. Shouldn't, shouldn't make anyone bearish. This is a very healthy thing to do. This is the chart relaxing, energizing, or re-energizing itself. I think you could see gold going as low as this area here, mm -hmm. a retrace in this range. And basically, once you get there, I will be a massive buyer of gold. I expect that this is just the beginning of a bigger breakout to the upside. And I think, again, you're heading probably this year to maybe as high as 2500 an ounce. So there's a lot more upside to be had here. I think as we get further in the year and you start to see more and more problems develop, inflation not coming down, the economy starting to slow, maybe stagflation out there, a lot of money is going to get driven into uh, gold. So gold looks amazingly good here. Um, if you have a long-term horizon, buy it here, I would say. If you're looking for more of a swing trade entry like me, look for a little bit more downside, maybe to that 1850, 1840 level. And when we're looking at the charts, we never really like to see those parabolic moves up because right. they tend not to be able to sustain themselves easy. They get very overbought in the short term. So uh, a retracement, uh, a pullback is is generally guaranteed when we when we see such parabolic moves. And we kind of want to see a little of a, a, a formation of a, of, a, of a base there before we move a bit higher. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. I would. I think I think retracing to what we call the scene of the crime, which is the initial breakout area, which was right in here. That's really helpful for a chart. It makes it a stronger chart to have done that. And then you can get energy. I mean, basically, when it pulls back, think about a springboard. You're pulling that rubber band more and more and more gets here and then it can rock it to the upside. And so I, I do think that that's key. I think we'll then break out above this high. And I think I've talked to you about this in past interviews, but if you look at the 1970s, when you had that high inflationary period, gold has behaved exactly like it did back then. You had mm. the 2018 to 2020 move, which mirrored 73 to 75. You then had 2020 to 2022, which is the consolidation we saw. That was 75 to 77. And now we've started the bigger breakout, which from 77 to the early 80s, you basically, I mean, you ripped from Really, I mean, it was, I think it was around $100 and change to almost $900 an ounce back in the 70s. Um, right. I don't think percentage wise you're going to see that same sort of move because that's no. a massive percentage wise. Hmm. But could you see 5,000 an ounce in two or three years? Yeah, I absolutely hmm. think you could. But 2,500 an ounce, you think, is potentially on the cards for 2022? I, I do think this year that makes a lot of sense. If you look at measured moves in various technical charts, um, we have to get through this high here, which is that 2075 double top. But once that gets cleared, I think you have a lot of money that starts chasing gold up because of that breakout. That's a big, big level that a lot of investors are watching. Um, and finally, let's finish up with silver. Absolutely. So silver's had a nice little short-term breakout. It's doing the same sort of retrace here. So I think we have to be aware of that as well. And I think this is the same situation as gold, where you had this breakout here. Now it's a little bit of a different chart, right? Because mm. if you look at the gold chart, gold was basically back up to its 2020 highs. So gold was up here versus silver is only back here. But having said that, you still have seen a breakout of this downsloping trend line uh, here. So what I think you look to do is you look to buy $24 an ounce on silver right here. And then you look for the next move up, which I do think the next move up takes us back to this 30 double top right there. So it's a nice move. I mean, $6 move, maybe in, in a matter of a month or two, gives us about a 25% return on silver potential mm -hmm. for that level. And if you really want to be a disciplined, disciplined silver trader, what you would do is you basically keep a stop on any close you know, right below this trend line, right? So if you're buying at 24, you're risking about $2 to 
to make $6 on the upside. And I think that risk reward is very, very healthy. So a uh, price target, if we break the, if, if we break that level, you said, you know, 30 is on the cards again. Yeah. Yeah. So I think again, buying 24, you see 30. Now, if it breaks 30, which eventually it will, that's tougher to know how high it could go. Um, I don't know if you get a, a kind of a repetition of what we saw years and years ago of that crazy move to the upside. I think and go to the, my, let's go to the monthly chart here. I mean, this was just absolutely remarkable, but I mean, in, interestingly enough, right. We could almost look at this chart and say, well, look at this. Here was your high here and here, mm -hmm. and then look at when it broke out. And then you could kind of make the same case where if we go to the near term silver chart again, and let me just flip back to the daily chart where you have the same sort of general pattern, right? Here's that high, here's that second hit. And what we're doing is we're waiting for that third hit right here. And if it can break out, do you get kind of that mega squeeze on silver that everyone is just praying for? You know, if you've been in silver for a while, I, I just always every every year or two you hear about, oh, is it, it's going to happen that mega squeeze, and it might actually initiate if we get above thirty.